morning to everyone. We are very glad to be here with you. Um, and I'd like to introduce uh, the opposition team, Carlone from Valletta, and the opposition team, La Farina from Messina. The motion that they, you will uh, discuss today is, this house believes that people who maintain an unhealthy lifestyle should pay more for their medical assistance in public hospitals. Uh, I remind you that uh, during your speech you have to take off your masks. And I would like also to invite uh, the uh, speakers who want to do a POI to do the same if possible, just to um, facilitate the uh, comprehension of the other uh, team. And that said, uh, of course, uh, if you have your mobile phones, you can also take your time that we have it here. And uh, please wait for my uh, introduction every time you have to speak. Not, don't uh, begin without my uh, small introduction. Thank you very much. <coughs> and I would like now to invite uh, the first speaker of the proposition team to begin the debate. Thank you. I will start creature one. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this debate. I'm Marta and I'm the first speaker of the pro uh, group. So the motion for today's debate is this house believes that people who maintain an unhealthy lifestyle should pay more for their medical assistance in public hospital. But what does this mean? What is truly an unhealthy lifestyle? An unhealthy lifestyle is regarded to be a type of life characterized by a such of choices that represents harm towards people. The main causes of, uh, um, of this kind of lifestyle are um, the consumption of alcohol, uh, cigarettes, um, fast food. Specifically, our house uh, would like to bring up um, an example to underline the reality um, of, of this kind of situation. There are several uh, statistics regarding, uh, regarding the high percentage of uh, obese people all around the world, in particular in America, um, that counts millions of people who decide to exploit um, food um, and these are them. And because these people are more uh, likely to um, experience some uh, uh, critical illnesses uh, like earth uh, attack, uh, high blood pressure, um, high level of cholesterol, uh, so it's really dangerous for them. And this is all their choice, uh, which can be simply avoided if they only wanted to. Um, so, I, as the first speaker, will be talking about the ethical aspect of this motion. Um, and Paula, as the second speaker, uh, will, be, uh, will talk about um, the economical aspect of this situation and uh, Eleanor as the third speaker will reinforce what we said, what Aral said and uh, will um, introduce some more examples. So the problem is that this is the choice of the people who decide to maintain this kind of lifestyle. Um, yeah, I, yes. What if they are too poor to change their lifestyle? Sorry, can you repeat uh, what if they are too poor to change their lifestyle into an healthier one? Um, what if they are too poor to change their lifestyle into an healthier one? Uh, they should, uh, for sure, uh, made 
some other kind of decision like uh, uh, for uh, the diet so they uh, should um, eat some more healthy food or reduce all this kind of that um, that aspect that could hurt that cell so uh, returning to my argumentation it's like um, if you poke your finger with a with a nettle, and despite the pain, you continue to uh, to push through the, your skin, to push it through your skin. So it's your fault if you are continuing to bleed. So it it's your choice. Um, a person that has a genetic illness or inheritance cannot simply avoid their illness uh, as they are born to it and born to it. Although initially healthy people um, they choose they choose to have unhealthy habits decide to ruin themselves despite the fact that they know that such things will hurt them. So people that choose this uh, such lifestyle are aware of, of what they are doing here because uh, of the con or because we all have been educated at school about uh, consequences of smoking, uh, drinking, and this kind of uh, of actions. This is why we think that such people um, are stealing a place and resources from who really need it. Um, from people who uh, are born with this kind of, um, of illnesses, and we, uh, in this in this way, we sh uh, we could use uh, this kind of uh, resources, the money, I, um, the money, to uh, invest in new uh, structure for hospital, um, for. Um, Humanitarian, humanitarian purposes. Uh, so, in general, our point is that um, making these people pay a price for having uh, an unhealthy lifestyle, unhealthy behavior, uh, we pitch up the resources. We could pitch up the resources and use in another way, in another way for our society because they are conscious of what they are doing. They know that they are acting themselves and also the society because of their choice. So our point is that we should um, we should um, pay um, more for, for this kind of people. In this case, in this motion, we are talking also about the public hospital. We know that um, in public hospitals, especially in Italy, um, this kind of um, medical um, medical actions are paid by governments, but is not uh, in the case because there are uh, specific. Um, um, there are specific um, uh, specific treatment and cure that uh, that uh, uh, cost more uh, uh, more um, respect of the things. So we should um, use this mind to uh, have that people who are born with this kind of illnesses and that can choose to, um, to have uh, say. So this is the final uh, part of my argument. Uh, yeah, I, I will begin in three, two, one. Good morning everyone, my name is Martina Maria D'Agostino and I'm the first speaker of the House against the motion, which states that this House believes that people who maintain an unhealthy lifestyle should pay more for the medical assistance in public hospitals. But before I begin my speech, I would like to rebut some of the points 
of the House uh, in, in favour of the motion. Firstly, uh, we disagree with the, um, the meaning or the definition of uh, the word lifestyle. And in this case, the motion is referring to an healthy lifestyle. And according to the Collins Dictionary, um, a lifestyle means being constant with something. And an healthy means likely to cause poor health or not fit or well. We also would like to add some definitions, such as the one of, uh, um, such as the one uh, of help or support, um, or medical assistance. Uh, so medical assistance would mean help or support. Then we would like to rebut another point, which is um, people. Who, they put that the people who live in America are most likely to get ill. And then they said that it is simply not their choice. We believe that this is not true because not everyone has the possibility to uh, eat uh, uh, healthy foods and maybe to avoid uh, those type of food that they they said. said. Uh, they also said that they should make other kinds of de decisions when uh, referring to the poor people. But that's not, uh, we believe that that is inconceivable because if they are poor, how can they afford more money uh, to, um, um, to, uh, for medical assistance? If they can't uh, find money to eat healthier, how can they uh, find more money to, um, for medications? And uh, moreover, they uh, didn't present a solution to this problem. So how could the government enact such a proposal? Uh, we really don't understand this. Now I would like to present, introduce our argumentation line. I, as the first speaker, uh, I, would I will talk about how an healthy lifestyle is a privilege that not everyone, everyone can afford and how we should all be treated equally in front of the law. The second speaker of our house, Luca Santa Maria, will talk about the possible consequences of this kind of policy and the importance of freedom of choice. Then, the third speaker of our house, Alicia Medindiglia, will rebut and clear our points. Finally, uh, the fourth speaker will give us a summary of this debate. It is our burden to uh, maintain the status quo, so the current situation. Do you think that uh, it, it is fair to punish people for something that, they may be, that may be out of their control? Our house answers no. An healthy lifestyle is in, indeed isn't accessible to everyone. And uh, most people who have an unhealthy lifestyle don't, don't do so because they want, they want to, but not because they, want, they don't want to, but because they have no other choice, as, as I have already said. For example, people with poor income have a hard, time, have a hard time affording healthy food. And since they need to work very hard and as much as they can to make a living, and they don't have time for, an ex uh, for example, phys uh, physical exercise. They, they are people who work so hard to maintain their families, their children, and to do so, they have to sacrifice their health. That for many, it isn't a priority. They put, um, they, um, for many, it isn't just a priority, and they put other um, things in front of it. Uh, these people might feel sick and they might end up in public hospitals because of their unhealthy, uh, unhealthy uh, lifestyle that could be combined also with stress because unhealthy lifestyle could be referred also to mental state, not just physical. Uh, can we really punish them and make them more um, and make them pay pay more for medical assistance when they all the only reason for their situation is that they wanted to work very hard to support and for their families? 
uh, our house answers no. Another example um, are all those people with uh, maybe eating disorders that undoubtedly and uh, have an unhealthy, an unhealthy lifestyle. But that's not their choice. That's out of their control. And we shouldn't uh, add uh, to their, their burden by making them pay more for medical assistance. We should um, help them instead, as we are already doing in our current situation. Moving on to the second one. Right. Yes. Don't you think that poor people already are being helped? We are talking about, uh, you know, in general, people that choose to have a unhealthy lifestyle. Could you repeat the first part? Yes. Uh, we are, you are talking about poor people that in Italy are already being helped by corporations. Don't you think we should talk about, in general, people that choose to have an unhealthy lifestyle? Yes, both of them. We should have for people who have an healthy lifestyle. They, they, that, I don't really understand the question because that's combined. A person could be poor and have an, an unhealthy lifestyle, and the person could be healthy while having an unhealthy lifestyle. Uh, like, for example, as, 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 I, as I already said, people with eating disorders, they can't choose to do this. I mean, if they had... Um, uh, as we are already doing, people can, can spend more money for something that uh, is out of their control. Uh, poor, people can't, uh, more poor people can't have an healthy lifestyle because they don't have money. People with eating disorders can't have an, an unhealthy lifestyle maybe because uh, uh, they, have, uh, um, a current, uh, uh, they are living a current situation that's not uh, uh, the best for them. We can Change up. Moving on to the second point of my speech, everyone should be treated equally in front of the law. And a policy, a policy like this would be unfair. We don't know the reasons of their lifestyle. We don't know their background. How can we judge them and discriminate them? In conclusion, this house believes that people who maintain an healthy lifestyle shouldn't pay more for their medical assistance in public hospitals because that would be just very unfair. Thank you for your attention. Yes, go ahead. Um, three, two, one, I'll start now. Uh, good morning, my name is Paula Maria Miguel Strivas and I will be the second speaker for our proposition. Uh, our house strongly believes that uh, people who uh, lead an unhealthy lifestyle should be, um, should be charged with a supplement uh, to, um, <clears throat> in regards of their, in regards of their um, decisions. Uh, before starting my argument, I would like to confute some of the um, of what uh, the opposition speaker has said. Uh, they talked uh, about how um, an unhealthy lifestyle could be um, could be considered uh, couldn't be considered a choice because uh, a person who eats it may have a poor income or, or couldn't afford it. I will, in my speech, demonstrate how this is not true, as an unhealthy lifestyle uh, will end up being uh, only more costly. An unhealthy lifestyle is not just about a diet. An unhealthy lifestyle uh, could be considered smoking, uh, alcohol, drugs, uh, and so on. Uh, as an example, um, I'm thinking about cigarettes. A uh, usual smoker uh, will spend about six dollars for every pack of cigarettes. This, uh, continuing on, in a year, uh, if you smoke uh, one pack of cigarettes a week, uh, you will end up spending around three hundred sixty dollars a week. Uh, what we want to say with our motion is not that a person who, uh, with a unhealthy lifestyle, who wants treatment, uh, will have to pay. Um, uh, something uh, extremely expensive. We just want things to be fair for people who do not have a responsibility for all of these choices. Um, in fact, uh, uh, the usual smoker will not only smoke one pack of cig a week, but uh, uh, one may last them about one or a couple of days. 
uh, the opposition speaker also talked about uh, why we uh, shouldn't punish people for their de decision. But uh, with our motion, we do not want to punish. We just want people to take uh, responsibility for their action. If you uh, cheat on your wife, uh, what happens next, next is that uh, she leaves you. And that uh, is something you can control, but it's a consequence of your action. And this is what uh, we want to happen, to make things more fair for people who do not uh, have this. When speaking about uh, eating disorders, uh, um, we do not think uh, that uh, this is in regards of an unhealthy lifestyle, because this uh, is uh, something that people can control, while an unhealthy diet is something that you can. In fact, in my speech, uh, I want to talk uh, about uh, the very simple fact that uh, one person can't uh, become uh, obese uh, uh, um, from day to day. It is a very long process uh, that uh, requires uh, uh, consciousness of what is happening you know, uh, every single day. Yes. Don't you think people become obese because they have an, e an eating disorder? Well, uh, I believe that uh, with our argumentation we want, to, uh, we want to make sure that things will be equal and fair for everyone. So uh, if we were to be uh, putting this supplement uh, in hospitals, we want uh, to determine if uh, this uh, kind of unhealthy diet uh, is uh, determined by a psychological situation. Continuing on with my argument, uh, I uh, would like to start uh, by focusing uh, on, on um, uh, one of the most important concepts uh, of this argumentation, which is uh, priority. The reason why we are firmly convinced uh, in our motion is that uh, people who willingly choose to hurt themselves uh, should take responsibility of their actions because they are taking away the place of a person who may actually be needing this. Uh, it, uh, as an example, it could be the case of COVID-19 um, when, uh, when hospitals were out of bed. Imagine if a person who actually really needed that bed had um, had it, uh, um, you know, occupied by someone who was having uh, a fever because of uh, their action. We do not, uh, with this, I do not want to say that people who have an unhealthy lifestyle shouldn't be treated because uh, uh, they should be treated just as much as, as all the other people. But uh, I would like to suggest another system. In fact, uh, uh, the opposition speaker with their POIs asked uh, us uh, uh, if we had an, a solution. This is something else I want to focus on. In fact, uh, one of the, argument, uh, the main examples for my argumentation will be talking about how uh, that uh, we would like to apply the American system. Uh, in fact, in Italy, treatments uh, are paid uh, uh, by the state, uh, by our taxes, the taxes of uh, healthy people who uh, maybe even can't afford them. The, uh, in fact, uh, with our supplement, uh, uh, we, want, uh, we want it to be useful for the general society. In fact, the, the money that is going to be spent uh, will not end up uh, in the pockets of uh, small companies uh, and uh, small uh, doctors, but it will be reinvested in, uh, in the structures uh, for them to have uh, better equipment and to be able to help more people. Um, in fact, uh, uh, returning back to my previous argumentation, uh, in America the system is completely different. By relying on, the, on uh, insurance, uh, uh, in the case of a medical emergency, um, um, uh, these insurance companies will pay for every single treatment at uh, their hospitals. And if uh, uh, people are living an unhealthy life, lifestyle, they will be paying this insurance company uh, a small supplement. Uh, so, uh, in the case of an actual medical emergency like a bronchitis, uh, the insurance will pay, the, will pay uh, the hospitals and uh, just uh, heighten up a little bit uh, uh, the pay these people will pay. So, even people who can't really afford uh, uh, this supplement that will not be as expensive as we think we, it's going to be, um, they are going to be able to afford the treatment because everyone should be treated fairly and should be treated in case of medical emergency. Um, America is known for their increased percentage of the by school. With this we are not talking about um, chubbiness, but we are talking about full-on 300 lips 
people who uh, rely on others for everything in, the, in their lives, people who can shower and can't even get out of bed. Um, what I'm saying may seem uh, insensitive, but uh, as I was saying before, it is the process, uh, it is the long process, and we want to offer for these people uh, some kind of rehabilitation. Um, so, what I ask of you is why I, as a healthy person, should pay more in my taxes uh, for someone uh, with whom I do not have a, a responsibility for. Having a, a, an unhealthy lifestyle, in our opinion, is a choice. And uh, it cannot be happening as an economical decision because, because it is more costly than an healthy one. I, um, I, and uh, this is why we believe that people should pay more uh, if their lifestyle is unhealthy in regards of, um, of uh, in regards of uh, treatments and hospital decisions. Uh, with this, I conclude my motion. Thank you very much. Start in three, two, one, go. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Lucas Maria, and I'm the second speaker of the House against the motion. Before starting, I'd like to rebut some of the things that the other House has said. First of all, uh, we disagree with the fact that an unhealthy lifestyle can be only a choice because, as we said before, lifestyle, by definition, is not it must is not always a choice. A lifestyle can be dictated by where where you are born, for example, and obviously that, that, that is not a choice. Moreover, uh, when we talk about an healthy lifestyle, uh, the other house has said that obviously uh, eating disorders do not count because they are not a choice. But according to the definition of unhealthy, which I reiterate is a uh, li uh, lifestyle likely to cause poor health or not fit or, or being not fit or well, fully, this definition fully includes every kind of unhealthy lifestyle that comes from a psychological disorder of en or any kind of instability and fragility. Moreover, the other house has cited as an example of their system the American system of, of health. The only problem is that the American system of health is not a public health system. It's a private one decided by corporations and insurances and, institu and non-public institutions. As such, we don't think it is the best choice for our, uh, for our topic. Uh, then, I want another point that I wanted to rebut is, uh, according to the, the addiction point, but this was already the, point, the main point of my speech, and so I will just talk about what our house feels regarding the topic in my own speech. Okay. First of all, when we, as, as, we, as I said, when we consider an unhealthy lifestyle, obviously we should consider uh, an unhealthy lifestyle that comes from psychological problems or disorders. And thus, we should also consider the consequences of imposing an additional fee of obliging people to pay more once they receive medical, medical assistance in public hospitals. What, well, how will this impact poor or mentally fragile people? For example, people that suffer from addictions, which obviously are likelier to cause health, health problems and push people to require med public medical assistance will, if, will be even more crushed by an imposition of a possible uh, extra fee for their medicines. Uh, this, the, their addiction is not always a choice. There are people who, go, who start to do drugs or any kind of substances because of desperation, because they feel abandoned, because they feel that that is the only way to cure an internal uh, sufferance. And those people, knowing that requiring help, asking for help, could mean that they will uh, also need to pay more. They will, they will likely even have an economical damage that for them may not be 
so possible to sustain because obviously uh, being addicted to substances is also an economic burden which should not be underestimated. Those people will likely not, so not try and search for cures. They will not go to hospitals. They will not require help. And, those, and, that, and that consequence will likely lead to more deaths. However, since they have cited the American system, although we have some doubts regarding how legitimate this is an option, I want to cite that another problem that we have found is that when you ask people to pay more uh, to receive medical assistance, although it is because, uh, even though it is because of their uh, lifestyle, still, uh, poor people that have a healthy lifestyle, knowing that they will be required to pay more once they ask for, pub for public health, Obviously, they will, choose to, they will probably choose to, to simply not go to the hospital. For example, in America, people choose willingly to not call for an ambulance because it does come for an, with an extra cost. So, this pro the position of the House in favor of the motion could actually lead, lead to human deaths. We have a moral duty to help them. They are people which usually have encountered very uh, incredible difficulties during their lives which have left them scarred or simply too fragile to resist. We need to help them. We should not leave them behind. But this proposition will obviously, will necessarily leave behind people with already existing economic difficulties or any kind of problem regarding the health. They cannot sustain to pay more for, uh, for uh, public, public, public health assistance. Moreover, Another point of my speech is the importance of freedom of choice. Uh, obviously, everyone has the right to choose how they live their lives. And uh, they have the right to choose uh, the life that best fits them, the life that makes them happier. And stopping them from searching and reaching that happiness, which obviously are unhealthy lives, they may not always be from problems. It may also be because people feel happier when they choose that said lifestyle. And they have the right to choose the way in which they want to live. Everyone, everyone, and that is a right which is granted. You are? Yeah, sure. Don't you think they could seek help before starting to pursue such lifestyle? Well, obviously in a, an ideal world, everyone will do that. But we can see already in our, in our already existing system that that is not how it works. People usually don't go already to... Uh, search for uh, a lot of people do already not go to search for public medication for assi assistance, but this problem will be only worsened by an additional uh, uh, additional fee. It will this proposition will not help with this problem. It will only worsen, and this shouldn't be how we try to do things. We should try to better our world, not to worsen it. Then obviously this. Uh, proposition would be an imposition to already uh, citizens that pay taxes and contribute to our society. They have all the rights to uh, have uh, public, to have public health, and as such to choose how they live their lives, although it may be unhealthy. Personal freedom, we think, that is inviolable. And I want to cite a quote, I want, I want to quote John Stuart Mill. Over himself, over his own body and mind, the individual is sovereign. And we think that this is a right that should be always upheld. Moreover, as the, as the first speaker already said, uh, there are a lot of people which would be hurt by that system who, would, who still, or still don't have really the, the right, to, don't have the possibility to choose. People with uh, more than one job, because maybe they need that to sustain their families, Students which lack the which lack the time to uh, enough to live healthier will be hurt by the system of the proposition house. They will be hurt because they will be required to make another sacrifice, another economic sacrifice, to a position that may already not be uh, perfect because of something that of a situation in which they found themselves in. It is not ethical. It is not right. It will be an, uh, another burden on their psychological health, which may as well require more assistance. With such a proposition, their psychological health will probably, will probably worsen. They will need more medical assistance and they will need more expenses from the state. So in conclusion, 
we think that it's this is clear, this proposition leaves behind a lot of the most fragile people, a lot of the people that we should try our best to help. And that is not the way we, that our hostics is try to go forward. Thank you. Okay, hey, hello everybody, I'm Eleonora, I'm the third speaker of the, of the proposition team and I will uh, reinforce what my teammate said and I will of course talk about uh, some more things that the uh, opposition team brought up. So, uh, the main things that the opposition team brought up were mainly three that would be eating disorders, economic reasons, and of course, um, um, we have um, more like the freedom of choice of one person. So, about the freedom of choice, that is actually our point, uh, as we already said plenty of times. Uh, we think that a person, uh, as a mature person that gets educated, especially in, in Italian schools where we plainly uh, always say how uh, drugs are bad, drugs are tend to uh, you know make a person dependent from them. Alcohol can make people dependent from it, and actually uh, cigarettes too. That many uh, youngsters actually um, avoid you know or they actually neglect what is being said to them, and they actually uh, start smoking. Uh, because they don't want to listen to what uh, in the lessons is said, that actually they, we should not actually start doing these such lifestyles. And we say it plenty of times, but of course uh, it, is, uh, it seems that it's not effective. Uh, so I think such system will make it more effective because maybe a person would think before starting to marry to in you know have such lifestyle they will think about the consequences more because people do not think about the consequences that uh, derive from actually drinking, smoking or eating too much. For from actually talking about food, I will actually go or to talk about the eating disorders that you mentioned. So a big argument that we all we brought up is that uh, disorders Disorders sometimes are uh, kind of um, given not only from the place we live in, but even from a psychological predisposition that might be given from uh, neurological aspects that are inherited, so not chosen by us. Uh, so uh, our argument is that we don't want people that, uh, we want priority for people that uh, cannot choose to not have a, a, a you know, unhealthy lifestyle because some people are just bound to have illnesses such as people that are, are born with hearts that are weaker than others uh, that might be uh, more weak to heart attacks uh, and such things like those. Well, our main argument is to make those people that actually uh, are healthy when born and they, they don't have any gen genetic, uh, you know, they don't have any genetic illnesses Yes. If someone has a genetic illness, why should they pay for this? If we that's not their choice. Yes, we didn't say they should pay because it's not their choice. Uh, that is an argument, actually. We said it plenty of times. They should not pay uh, because they, it's not their choice to have such illnesses. But a healthy person that is born healthy, a very healthy child that chooses to start smoking, eat, eating a lot of food, that should not be eaten, you know, that frequently, or actually start drinking a lot. That is their choice to do such thing. Even if driven by other factors, we are still um, responsible of our choices. Um, so a person that chooses to be unhealthy, uh, we are not talking about people that are uh, have illnesses that are genetic because those ones should not pay. In fact, the people that should pay is because we want to be it to be fair for the people that actually have these illnesses and it's not their choice. That is our argument. Actually, our strong uh, is actually our main one. Uh, and another one was the economic uh, economic factor. Um, so about that, you said. Poor people can't actually uh, pay, uh, like you know, for healthy food, and I think this is 
completely wrong because especially in Italy we have uh, a lot of vegetables, uh, meat uh, that is available at low prices and if you choose to not cook at home and go eat in, uh, you know, junk food like chips or other stuff like that, a lot of chocolates, well, that's your choice. Because I do not think that, of course, you know, eating an ice cream with your friends or, you know, going to a fast food with your friends from time to time is okay. But we are talking about people that systematically go to eat a fast food or people that each day buy a pack of cigarettes to smoke them. It's not healthy. And we all know that. We always said it. We have a lot of uh, education in our country about such topics. And if you neglect such, uh, you know, teachings, uh, it's just a choice, or it's just like you are being uh, blindsided about the consequences that it could bring you. So yeah, uh, people that choose, or you know, maintain, because some, you know, some people could start to have such lifestyles, but some people choose to maintain it. They don't even want to change their lifestyle because they think that it's not needed. They think yeah, they're okay like that. Uh, and so I think they, yeah, totally they should pay a uh, supplement. And this supplement not only could actually make it fair for the people that have illnesses that they can choose not to have such, uh, but it will make it actually the states, it will make it easier to make the, uh, our resources in hospitals available for, you know, uh, therapies or, you know, have new structures. So it will be actually a new income from the state to help people that need. And for poor people, again, I will bring on to that fact again. There are many cooperatives for poor people and uh, people with disorders that help them, even for free. So I don't think it's uh, um, it's actually a, you know, a valuable argument that you brought up because here in Italy, especially with Caritas, we have a lot of help towards the poor and we actually uh, enhance a possibility for them to have uh, a healthy lifestyle. Uh, such things that you said that was not possible, but uh, I don't think a, p a person that doesn't have the economic uh, availability to go every day to buy, uh, you know, let's take uh, an unhealthy food, McDonald's, or every day to buy cigarettes, uh, like every day, five, five euros, or like, you know, uh, let's say a person buys three packets uh, uh, every week, it's a lot of euros. Uh, and it's your choice to buy such, and if you then complain not having money after buying cigarettes that are not, you know, uh, uh, they are not uh, indispensable, then you don't live off cigarettes. Uh, if you buy those, then it's your fault. And if you need help uh, for going out of an addiction, of course you can seek help, and no one will judge you for that. Uh, in fact, it's actually encouraged, but many people do not seek it. Uh, many people that know that a person that is ill, they do not help the person, and I think this is simply a fault of, of the system. But again, and, uh, before smoking, a person is not addicted. It's their choice to start being addicted. So this is why I, we think that people that maintain an unhealthy lifestyle should pay in public hospitals. Thank you very much. Speaker of the House against the motion. Now I will be addressing some of the points made by the proposition house, and then I will recap uh, the points that we that our house has made so far. Now um, one of the main points of the proposition house is that unhealthy lifestyles are a choice, and uh, even one of the few I 
uh, was, shouldn't we talk about people who choose unhealthy lifestyles? But that's not the only thing, thing we should talk about, because the motion uh, only mentions people with unhealthy lifestyles. It doesn't specify people who choose unhealthy lifestyles. And as our house has repeated so far, unhealthy lifestyles aren't always a choice. Um, a point that they made was about cigarettes, for example, and how when you smoke cigarettes, you make the choice of becoming addicted when you start smoking. Uh, but they also mentioned how youngsters uh, start smoking. But when um, we're talking about children who start smoking, are they really making a choice? Because they're just children. They're being pressured by, by their peers, or maybe they, they're following the example of their parents. So can we really say that, um, that they have a choice when they start smoking? Because most people uh, who start smoking are children. Um, so I, I don't believe uh, we should classify smoking as a choice uh, when it comes to children. And when they, once they keep smoking, it stops being a choice because smoking is an addiction. And when you're addicted to something, you can control it. Um, and, well, I, as we said before, when... You are? Yes. Can't you stop being addicted and actually, you know, seek help and then pursue a healthy lifestyle that would free you from this uh, sad pain? Um, well, if you stop being addicted, you, you would need medical help. That, and you would need to pay more for that medical help. Because um, you you would be classified as living an unhealthy lifestyle according to well to, to the policy that you are defending. Um, uh, now uh, another point that, that um, the proposing house was that uh, the the mental illnesses and that, that we talked about uh, are genetic, so that they shouldn't be counted as unhealthy lifestyle, but not all of them are genetic. Uh, a, a lot of these illnesses uh, can develop because of unhealthy lifestyles, but they're still illnesses. And th when the, the, they're illnesses that can be controlled. If someone uh, is depressed, and because of that, uh, they develop a, an unhealthy relationship with food, and um, they start uh, developing an un unhealthy dis uh, eating disorder, that's not their choice because their mind um, isn't working properly. They, they need help. It, they, they can't control what they're doing, and these people shouldn't pay more for the help that they need, uh, especially because, the, as, as the second speaker of our house already mentioned, when, when these people know that by seeking help in hospitals, they would pay more, and maybe they can afford it, they would, they would not simply not go. And by doing that, uh, we would have even more unhealthy people in the world. Because people, knowing that they need to pay more, uh, and they, knowing that maybe they can afford it, they would s stop seeking medical help. Um, you are? Uh, I, uh, yes. Uh, don't you think that people knowing that they need to pay, they won't start a lifestyle like before? Can you repeat the question? Don't you think that people knowing that they need to pay, they won't start this lifestyle at all? Well, as, I, as, I, as we've mentioned many times, sometimes not starting this lifestyle isn't a choice. Uh, for example, uh, another point um, made by the, the third speaker was that um, healthy food is actually um, affordable. And uh, it's true, when, when you have time to cook at home, it's easy to uh, buy groceries and, and cook, cook food and have uh, healthy meals. But, um, for example, uh, as my first speaker, uh, my first, uh, our first speaker mentioned, uh, there's people with poor incomes that have to work 24-7 to maintain their families, and they don't have time to cook food. And the most convenient thing for them would be getting um, cheap, uh, cheap and fast options like fast food. But uh, that wouldn't really be their choice. They would have to do that because they need to work for their families. Um, now um, that I, I've addressed, I think I've addressed uh, everything, um, I would like to um, uh, summarize the points made by my friends. Uh, first of all, um, we have highlighted 
how an, an unhealth, uh, a healthy lifestyle is not easy for everyone to achieve. Um, uh, another example that I could add is, um, for example, students who are just starting, starting out, um, living alone, uh, they, they need to study uh, and they need to work at the same time to, uh, to be able to, to sustain themselves. But when they need to study and, and, and work at the same time, uh, they, uh, they don't have time to cook, as I said before, uh, and they, the, they would go to the more convenient option, which is fast, fast food, and therefore they would lead an unhealthy lifestyle. The, the lifestyle. There's many reasons why someone would lead an unhealthy lifestyle. It's not as simple as, oh, they just chose to do that, and they could easily not. But that's not true. People, it's yeah. not. I um, refuse. Um, <laughs> um, um, so yeah, it's, it's not, uh, the, the problem isn't that simple, and it's not a choice. Um, then the, uh, the, the second speaker of our house uh, talked about um, how, uh, in more detail, about people with uh, um, addiction, for example, who also, which is also a thing that um, isn't a choice. When, when you start becoming addicted to something, it stops being a choice. And um, the, um, uh, our, our second speaker also talked about uh, the importance of freedom of choice because uh, we focused our debate on people who don't have a choice, but people who, they, they obviously there, there are people who do have a choice, but why should we take that away from them? Uh, that's also important because we live uh, in a world where, uh, in a democratic society where people should um, be free, uh, obviously, uh, in still respecting the law, but they should be free of uh, leading the lifestyles that makes them, that make them happy. Um, so we believe uh, it's uh, in conclusion we believe that it's unhealth and un un unethical to indiscriminately um, um, uh, punish people um, for their lifestyles when sometimes. Uh, it could even be out of their control. Uh, thank you for, for your attention. Let's see you later. Thank you very much. Thank you. I will start with three, two, one. Good morning, everyone. Again, my name is Luca Santa Maria, and I will have the burden and the honor to conclude this uh, truly enjoyable debate. Uh, I will be recapping what the two houses said. I will be highlighting then the points of clash and I will show you why we have demonstrated that the system proposed by the proposition house is not uh, the one that we should choose to go forward. First of all, one of the main points of clash has been regarding uh, the fact that an unhealthy lifestyle may or may not be uh, choose. Well, we have demonstrated that Obviously, an unhealthy lifestyle is not always a choice. A lot of people, uh, are, to, a lot of people are pushed into an unhealthy lifestyle because of psychological condition, which may become from uh, a, fra a fragility or also from their families. There are people who are found themselves in situations of poverty and need cheap options for food or quick options for food. They may not have the time to go and buy uh, vegetables at the local uh, shop for organic food. They may not have the time to start and cook a balanced and uh, healthy uh, and healthy lunch or dinner because they lack the time, because they maybe have to work to provide for their families. The other house has ignored these problems. Uh, they try to generalize the all the conditions which lead to an unhealthy lifestyle uh, into freedom of choice without looking at the reality of the facts. Also with addictions, they have uh, said that this is a choice, but they fail to consider that a lot of people uh, go and start to use substances because of inner psychological fragilities and maybe desperation, uh, or, the, or because they feel abandoned by society, for a lot of different reasons. But still, they shouldn't be abandoned. And this is why we have won this point of the debate. Because obviously their choice, 
I shown that we will be leaving behind the same people that we need desperately to help. The second point of this uh, debate, and the one that our house thinks is most important to be highlighted, is in regards of the system itself which was proposed. Obviously, the other house has cited as an example the American system and has proposed to translate it into our, uh, into other nations' systems. But the American system is a public health system which has nothing to do with uh, public. It's a private health system which has nothing to do with public, which is not granted by the state. Health in America is not considered a uh, right, as in other nations such as in Europe. Moreover, they cited the American system as, as, a, as a virtuous system, but still they have uh, uh, they are a bit contradicted in themselves when they said that when they cited the American system as a good option, but then and the first speaker has cited the American nation as an as a nation of unhealthy lifestyle, which obviously it's a bit uh, not clear why if that system is not working in America, why should it work with us? Even though, obviously, not considering the fact that it's not pretty uh, adherent to the topic that we are talking right now. And obviously, this is why we have won the second point of the debate, because obviously the other option has been shown to be an efficient and also completely private, devoid of any public part of the public uh, health system that is the center of our topic. And yeah, this is why this point is also ours. So I think that our team has done an incredible job at highlighting the problems and the inconsistencies of the other house of showing that their system is way too simplistic and it does not regard the, dif the different uh, facets of our reality. You cannot do such a general uh, proposition and not expect it to have terrible consequences on a lot of people. And that is why this is not the best way, we think that this is not the best way to go forward. Thank you. I can put it in Thank you very much. And now we give uh, to the proposition team the floor for the last uh, speech of uh, this uh, uh, right. and you're ready. First of all, um, before starting I would like to thank uh, the other team uh, and the judges for their time as this was uh, an incredibly interesting uh, debate and uh, a point for us all to uh, highlight uh, our point of strength uh, and uh, uh, our opinions. Uh, it was very nice to put ourselves in, uh, in the game and uh, actually try to, to be as good as possible. It was a pleasure. So now, uh, coming to our reply, um, today I will highlight our points of strength uh, and determining uh, where we clashed uh, and the reasons why uh, our house believes that uh, we uh, won this debate. Um, I'll start by uh, pointing out uh, the main point of clash uh, that went on uh, throughout uh, the whole debate that uh, um, is about uh, how much an unhealthy lifestyle is a choice. Um, I would like to say that um, uh, on the, the economical aspect of all of uh, this, uh, our house demonstrated largely how um, an unhealthy lifestyle is, uh, uh, is a choice. We explained throughout all the benefits of an healthy one and all the other options that uh, one can have. Uh, we talked about how a person cannot have uh, the time to cook themselves, uh, to cook themselves but we um, pointed out uh, how um, we believe that uh, uh, as much as a person can uh, go to McDonald's to get an hamburger, McDonald's also sells uh, salads. Um, we, uh, uh, we also talked about uh, the availability of food and how cheap uh, vegetables are in Italy, as an example. Uh, we also talked uh, about uh, how eating disorders uh, are... Um, 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 well, um, we said multiple times uh, another point of clash that we had uh, was about uh, mental illnesses and how uh, choice uh, is uh, determined. Uh, we want to point, uh, we want us all to remind us uh, of what the motion of today says. Uh, that is, uh, this house believes that people who maintain. Uh, 
maintain an unhealthy lifestyle should pay more for their medical assistance in public hospitals. So the point we want to make is how the problem is maintaining such uh, behavior. Um, um, we said multiple times how the well-being of the people is in our interest and that with our motion we made a parade of other options for people to help themselves, such as rehabilitation or insurance. We want to restate that America was just an example and also that the motion never talked about public hospitals because our person can get treatment both from private and from public. Um, uh, they talked about how we generalized the motion, but we never talked about uh, really uh, about the treatment having to be public. Freedom of choice is a right, but we said uh, the uh, very uh, multiple times how a person in a lucid state is conscious of the consequences of their choices, and we established that our system will only remind people of what will happen if they choose to maintain such habits. Um, in fact, uh, we said that. Um, uh, um, the system is effective because people think uh, more about the consequences of the people. One person may uh, may uh, get uh, may have such behavior if um, if they know that they will be treated in any case whenever they. Uh, they have it. We will treat all of these people, but we also want them to know how um, how their behavior is ineffective. So um, we establish all the benefits of our system, and this is why we believe that uh, our motion won. Thank you very much.